Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2015 Toyota Highlander, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com brake controller install kit. So we see a lot of Highlanders here at the shop and it seems like many of the owners tend to use them to do a little bit of everything. It does make sense. It's a really capable SUVs and uh, quite a few of them tow some relatively large trailers actually that are equipped with brakes. And so if that's what you're planning to do, you're gonna to need to use a brake controller. That way you can slow that large trailer down behind your Highlander. And with this kit, that's going to uh, help you to do that. It's going to provide the brake controller with the necessary inputs and outputs to allow it to do its job. So, and kind of as a bonus, uh, not only is this kit going to allow us to use a brake controller, but it's going to give us that seven-way connector back here as well. So this is a common type of connector that pretty much every trailer it brakes so has. So we're going to be able to plug into that. And what's kind of neat is we're still able to maintain that four-way flat connector as well. Again, super common. So if you got a couple different trailers, say maybe you got a small utility trailer or something like that that has a four-way flat, we're gonna be able to plug it in right there, not have to deal with, you know, trying to source some type of adapter that you can plug in a seven way and bring it down to four. So you kind of get uh, the best of both worlds with this setup here. Uh, this is gonna come with pretty much everything you need to get it hooked up. You know, depending on your particular application or hitch, you know, you may need to get a different bracket or something like that. In our case, um, we used about six foot of extra wiring, uh, which I would suggest doing. But keep in mind, uh, if you're wanting to use a brake controller, you are gonna have to pick that up separately. The brake controller itself doesn't come with this kit. And the one that we used today was the Red Arc, the Tow Pro Elite. Great choice, worked out really well, looks good, functions great. Um, if that's one you're not too crazy about, good news is there's tons of different options available right here at eTrailer. So uh, can make up your mind as far as that goes. And overall, just a great kit. You know, it's gonna be uh, relatively straightforward and allow you to get everything hooked up without too big of a headache. And with that being said, speaking of the installation, why don't we go ahead and hook it up together now? To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our Highlander. And first thing that we're gonna do is mount up uh, the bracket here. So this just got attached to the factory hitch. If you have a different hitch, you can still uh, mount this up using some no drill brackets or something like that, uh, however you find fit. And then what we can do is actually mount up our plug. So we're just gonna pass the wires through that opening. and take the included hardware and put it through. So we're gonna have a long screw and put that through. And let me just grab the rest of our hardware here. So on the back side, you're gonna take a flat washer, a split lock washer, and a nut. And I'm gonna use that same hardware combination for our other three attachment points to get this secure. So once you have them all hand tight and come back with a wrench and a screwdriver and snug them all down. I already did the other three. So once that's tight, you can take this end of your four pole, just mount that in the bracket and get that out of the way. Then what we can do, this end of our four pole, is gonna get plugged into the existing four pole wiring. So here's our existing uh, wiring there. What I am gonna do is take some dielectric grease and just put a coating on the terminals before we plug it in. You can find some of this here at E-Trailer if you need some. Let's get those plugged into each other. So what I went ahead and did is just wrapped up our connection point here in electrical tape, uh, just for some extra protection. 
And then I just zip tied the two together to keep it, um, for the most part, a permanent type connection. The blue wire, the stick blue wire that's coming out from our harness, uh, we're not going to be using that. That's for the reverse light circuit and mostly used in marine applications. Uh, so I just tape that up out of the way. That way, if you do ever need it, it's still there at least. That's going to leave us with three more wires. The white one here is going to be a ground. And these two are going to get connected to a bundle of wire and get routed up front towards the vehicle. <clears throat> with that said, it does come uh, with some pre-attached buck connectors which are perfectly fine to use. However, I do prefer to use heat shrink type connectors. They just offer us a little more protection against corrosion. And so I'm just gonna switch those out. I'm gonna cut off the ends. Strip back the insulation. Give the wires a good twist. The way these are gonna work, you're just gonna slide them on and crimp them down. And I'm doing this right now since the wires are just kind of hanging uh, and it gives us a little more, a little more room to work. So now underneath the vehicle, we can take our white wire with the ring terminal and get it grounded. So you want to use a, a good clean piece of metal right here. Uh, the sheet metal actually kind of doubles up and so it's nice and thick and I think that's where I'm going to ground this out. So I'm going to get this in place, take the included self-tapping screw, and run it down. So what I went ahead and did was just kind of zip tie up uh, our bundle of wiring there just to keep it secure. And then I grabbed our bundle of duplex wiring. One of the ends, you're just gonna uh, cut back the gray sheathing to expose the two wires inside. You're gonna have a black wire and a white wire. Strip back the ends of the insulation there. And then we can connect them to our buck connectors here. So the black wire coming from our seven way is gonna get connected to this black wire. So now as far as the wires that are coming out of the back of our seven-way harness, we're going to have a yellow, a blue, and a black. The yellow wire will be for the reverse light circuit, typically used in marine applications. So I just kind of taped that one up to the side here because we're not going to be using it. The blue wire will be our electric brake output. And so I used a buck connector to pair it up with the white wire there from our duplex wiring. Black wire from our seven way is going to be the 12 volt uh, out and that's going to get connected to the black wire from our duplex wiring. So I went ahead and just taped up our connections there just to give us an extra layer of protection. Zip tied it up here and then what I'm going to do is take our bundle of wiring, route this towards the front of the vehicle uh, get it into the engine compartment. So I'll go ahead and do that now and then show you the path that I took uh, to get it there. So I went ahead, got our uh, wiring ran. And so here's where the connectors are. It just runs uh, inside of this panel where it comes out right here. And when you're doing this, you want to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts and secure your wiring along the way using some of the zip ties. So I ran it up and over our subframe. Kind of see where it comes through there. All right, let me have it running kind of along this side. It comes out there. It follows up. And I did kind of pull this panel down a little bit. There's a couple 10 millimeter uh, nuts that you can remove, make it a little easier. So it just kind of runs along this bracing. See it there. There it comes 
through this opening here, and then it's gonna kinda go towards the outside of our vehicle. So you kinda see it through that gap. And it through the body mount there. And then if we look up through here, the wire's gonna run straight up uh, into the engine compartment. So now here in the engine compartment, you can see this is where our wiring came up. And once I got to about this point, what I actually did is remove the gray sheathing from the rest of our wires. That way we have a bundle of exposed wire. Uh, good trick to kind of get rid of it is if you take a utility knife and just carefully kind of slice down the middle, uh, you're able to kind of pull that sheathing apart and remove it from the wire. With that being said, we can grab our circuit breakers and get these mounted up. So you're gonna be using the 40 amp breaker, which is this one here as well as the 20 amp breaker, which is this one here. Um, what I like to do is remove the nuts first before we worry about mounting them. Because these seem to just kind of pop off the end and they're easy to lose. So that's why I take them off here first. And what I'm gonna do is mount these. I'm thinking right here against the firewall. It's a nice piece of metal that'll keep them secure. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these as well. And so I'm going to put our uh, 40 amp one on this side. And to do that, to secure them, I'm going to take the included self-tapping screws and run them through. Don't have a ton of space here, so I think I'm going to kind of double up uh, this one here. I'm going to run it through both of them. So we'll get one more in there, and these will be secured and ready to hook our wires up. All right, so now what we can do is we're gonna take our black wire and we're gonna focus on the 40 amp uh, breaker first. And we're gonna cut this length and put it over the silver post after we attach ring terminal. So I'll kind of just eyeball our length here. That trimmed and stripped back. And you want to make sure to hold on to all the uh, extra lengths of wire because we will be using them. We're going to take a small ring terminal, place that over the end, crimp it down. And as I said, this one's going to go over the 40 amp breakers silver post. Just slide that over. Come back with our nut, and we'll just run this down uh, hand tight for now. So now at this point, what I've done is cut about maybe two foot of black wire. On one end, I attached a large ring terminal. The other end, I crimped on one of the smaller ring terminals. The large end is gonna go to the uh, positive battery terminal and we'll just get it close for now we're not going to hook uh, that up just yet but the other end is going to go to the uh, copper colored post on our 40 amp breaker so we'll slide that over get one of our uh, nuts started hand tight here and then moving on to our 20 amp breaker what you're gonna do is again, cut maybe about two foot of that black wire and do the same thing, crimp on a large ring terminal, small ring terminal. And this is gonna get connected to the gold post there on our 20 amp breaker. So we'll slide that over and again, get this uh, started hand tight. Then what you want to do is take your remaining wire. I'm going to strip this back. Crimp on 
another small ring terminal. And attach it to the last remaining post there on our 20 amp breaker. So now that I have all of these nuts started hand tight, we can come back with a 3 8 wrench and snug them all down. At this point, what we can do is route our white wire as well as the black wire that's coming from the silver posts on our 20 amp breaker inside of the vehicle. Uh, what I chose to do is use a grommet on the passenger side. So I just kind of pushed our wires behind this foam cover. And this is where they come out. This is the grommet. Okay, so I poked a hole in it and pushed our wiring through that grommet. It's a little tricky to see, but easy to get to. It's uh, just right here in this area. So you can just take your hands and pop it out. And I will say, I did have to extend our wires. That way they can reach uh, back over to the driver's side once we're inside of our vehicle. Uh, if I had to guess, probably about six foot uh, would be a safe bet. Uh, and you can pick that up here at e-trailer. So there's the butt connectors that I used to extend them. And now with that done, what we can do is just push all of our wiring uh, inside of our vehicle. So now inside of the vehicle, we're on the passenger side uh, floorboard, kind of behind our dash. And this is where our wires pass through that grommet. And so the wires are gonna come through and then you're gonna start to route them towards the driver's side. I just kind of ran it along through here. You can just push it uh, behind your center console and once you push it through uh, the back of your center console, the wires will come out on the driver's side floorboard. And over here on the driver's side, you can see this is where our wiring comes through. And at this point, we can focus on getting it hooked uh, up to our brake controller plug. So now with our wires over here, I went ahead and stripped back the insulation, put on a couple of buck connectors, and connected our white and black wire to the wires coming from our brake controller plug. Now, your plug may look a little bit different, um, but every brake controller plug is gonna have the same four wires that function uh, the same. So, black wire will be your power, the white will be ground, blue will be your brake output, and the red wire will be your brake light um, signal from your brake switch. So with that said, if we come back up to our wires here that we ran over here, the black wire is gonna be for our power. So you'll hook that up to the black wire on your uh, brake controller wiring. The white wire here that runs back to our seven way, that's gonna be our uh, electric brake output. So your brake controller blue wire will go to that one. Now that's uh, left to do is just go back under the hood, hook our wires up to the battery itself, and then you can continue on getting whatever brake controller you have uh, completely installed. So back under the hood, our ring terminals here uh, that we left on the hook, pretty straightforward. If you remove this nut from our positive battery post using a 12 millimeter socket, and pull that off. We're just going to simply just put our ring terminals over that stud and tighten our nut back down. So now at this point, what I did was take the white wire uh, from our brake controller plug and ground it out. So on the end of it, I just crimped on a ring terminal and there's actually a factory stud there so I removed the nut using a 12 millimeter, slid the ring terminal over the stud, and tightened our nut back down. Now that we have everything hooked up, it is a good idea to test everything to make sure it's working properly. So we'll go ahead and turn on our taillights. We'll try our left turn, our right turn, our brake lights, 
can hit the manual override on the brake controller. See we have that output. And then in the top right corner of our tester box, you can see that we have our uh, 12 volt auxiliary power. So now that we tested it and know that everything is working properly, you will need to calibrate your brake controller. Um, and that's super easy. All you're gonna have to do is take it out with or without your trailer connected, doesn't really matter. And just uh, stop about 20 times as you normally would. So just drive around town like you normally would and apply the brakes when you need to. And after about 20 times of doing that, the unit should self calibrate. So you can see it's going from a green to blue, kind of flashing. That means it's uh, an active calibration. And once the light turns to a solid blue color, you know that it's calibrated. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com universal brake controller install kit on our 2015 Toyota Highlander.